Welcome to our channel, where we delve into the fascinating world of true crime and the captivating stories of extraordinary individuals. Today, we have an enthralling tale that will leave you on the edge of your seat, the incredible story of Victor Lustig, a master conman whose audacious exploits continue to mesmerize and bewilder. Prepare to be immersed in a world of cunning schemes, daring escapes, and close brushes with the law as we unravel the captivating life of this notorious criminal. From conning Al Capone to selling the Eiffel Tower, Lustig's journey is nothing short of a thrilling roller coaster ride. Every single day, scams unfold across the globe. In the modern digital age, it has become seemingly effortless for deceptive individuals to execute their schemes, whether through phishing emails, fraudulent texts, or pretending to represent reputable companies. Their goal is to exploit the trust and gullibility of unsuspecting recipients, coaxing them into sharing valuable information. Yet, delving back into the roaring 1920s, one particular con artist embarked on two audacious schemes that would etch his name into the annals of legend. Drawing from his early experiences in minor scams, this cunning individual set his sights on an extraordinary target, the iconic Eiffel Tower itself. Astonishingly, not only did he manage to successfully sell it once but incredibly, he pulled off the same feat a second time. The mastermind behind this extraordinary tale of deception is none other than Victor Lustig. Prepare to be captivated by the true story of Victor Lustig, a man whose audacity and charm enabled him to orchestrate one of the most daring cons in history, the sale of the Eiffel Tower. Victor Lustig was born in Austria-Hungary in 1890. He went to school in Paris, which is where he embarked on his life of crime. After he left school as a smooth-talking, witty, and attractive young man, fluent in several languages, he had all the makings of a professional confidence trickster. Lustig's foray into the realm of cons commenced aboard luxurious liners that sailed between the French and American ports. It was amidst the opulence of these vessels that he skillfully earned the trust of the wealthiest passengers on board. Inevitably, curiosity would lead them to inquire about the source of his wealth, and it was during these moments that Lustig would confide in them his extraordinary secret, a money box, capable of printing bills. Captivated by the allure of such a device, the passengers would eagerly accept his invitation to witness this marvel firsthand. In his cabin, Lustig would reveal the machine, seemingly conjuring $100 bills out of thin air, However, there was one small caveat, the machine required a staggering six hours to produce just a single bill. Undeterred by the time-consuming process, Lustig's guests returned later to witness the magic in action. They marveled as crisp $100 bills emerged from the machine, seemingly legitimate in every way. Their curiosity now fully piqued, they inevitably inquired about purchasing this extraordinary contraption. Seizing the opportunity, Lustig engaged in a bit of skilled negotiation, selling the so-called money box, for exorbitant sums, ranging from $10,000 to $30,000. Rumor has it that he even managed to sell one of these fictional machines for an astonishing $47,000. Unfortunately for the passengers who fell for his ruse, they soon realized that the money box was nothing more than an elaborate illusion. In truth, the machine only ever produced two genuine $100 bills, cleverly placed inside by Lustig himself. By the time his victims discovered the deceit, the master trickster had vanished into thin air, taking their hard-earned money with him. Such was the brilliance of Victor Lustig a man whose cunning wit and charismatic charm allowed him to orchestrate some of the most audacious cons in history. From the high seas to the heart of Paris, his legacy of deception and intrigue lives on, forever etched into the annals of the criminal underworld. Imagine someone approaching you with an audacious proposition, the opportunity to purchase the iconic Eiffel Tower. Your initial reaction might oscillate between dismissing it as an obvious scam or deeming the individual utterly insane. 
Attempting to make sense of such a bizarre proposal, you may even contemplate whether they meant a simple Eiffel Tower souvenir. The idea of acquiring the real structure itself would undoubtedly appear utterly preposterous in today's world. However, rewind to the year 1925, and the situation dramatically shifts. Surprisingly, during that era, the notion of owning the Eiffel Tower was not as implausible as it seems now. Back then, such a prospect was met with a glimmer of belief, making it more conceivable than one might imagine in our present-day reality. Standing tall and proud on the Champ de Mars in Paris, the iconic Eiffel Tower owes its name to its brilliant designer, Gustave Eiffel. Constructed over a span of two years, from 1887 to 1889, it emerged as the dazzling piece de resistance of the 1889 World's Fair, leaving visitors awestruck. Over time, it transformed into a powerful symbol of France, a testament to human ingenuity and architectural marvel. However, as the year 1925 dawned, whispers of a troubling situation began to circulate. Reports surfaced claiming that the French government found itself grappling with the financial burden of maintaining the majestic tower, which had fallen into disrepair over the years. In the midst of this predicament, a cunning mind was at work, none other than Victor Lustig himself. In the depths of his imagination, Lustig conceived his grandest con, a scheme that would exploit the precarious situation of the Eiffel Tower to his advantage. Thus, the stage was set for a daring and audacious endeavor, one that would forever etch his name into the annals of history. In the midst of heated debates and conflicting opinions, a newspaper article surfaced, revealing a startling proposition. Certain individuals were advocating for the removal of the beloved Eiffel Tower, instead of preserving it as a cherished landmark. Seizing this opportune moment, Victor Lustig's devious mind sprang into action, concocting a cunning plan to exploit the turmoil surrounding the iconic structure. With calculated precision, Lustig crafted a web of deception, fabricating false government documents that appeared unquestionably authentic. Armed with these forged papers, he orchestrated an exclusive meeting at a luxurious hotel, inviting representatives from scrap metal companies to attend. As the appointed hour approached, Lustig assumed the guise of the Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Posts and Telegraphs, adding an air of authority and credibility to his scheme. With eloquent persuasion, he spun a convincing narrative, presenting the notion that the Eiffel Tower was indeed slated for demolition. Intrigued and perhaps enticed by the prospect of acquiring this magnificent piece of history, the unsuspecting attendees listened intently, unaware of the elaborate trap being woven around them. The stage was set for the most audacious con of Lustig's life, one that would test the limits of his wit and charm like never before. With a master manipulator's finesse, Lustig skillfully weaved a web of deceit during a fateful meeting with shrewd businessmen. Casting doubt on the Eiffel Tower's significance and its compatibility with Paris' other landmarks like the illustrious Arc de Triomphe, he honed in on André Poisson, a young and ambitious entrepreneur seeking to climb the ladder of success. Recognizing Poisson's hunger for advancement and his underlying insecurities, Lustig cunningly orchestrated a private encounter. There, he donned the persona of a corrupt government minister, tantalizing the impressionable businessman with an enticing proposition, a chance to become the illustrious owner of the Eiffel Tower itself. Persuaded that this clandestine transaction would elevate him to the pinnacle of success, Poisson willingly paid Lustig an extravagant sum of approximately 70,000 francs. Desiring to evade the prying eyes of the authorities, Lustig discreetly absconded to Austria with the ill-gotten money. Astonishingly, Poisson never divulged the transaction to the police, weighed down by the shame and scandal that would follow. However, Lustig's audacious spirit eventually drew him back to the bustling streets of Paris, where he embarked on his fraudulent scheme once more. Initially, his deceitful tactics seemed to bear fruit once again, but fate took an unforeseen turn. 
Among the six new scrap dealers invited to a subsequent meeting, one astute individual sensed the ruse lurking beneath the surface and promptly alerted the authorities. Faced with the threat of exposure, Lustig acted with haste, boarding a luxury liner bound for the United States, eluding the tightening grasp of suspicion. In a tale of artful deception and heart-pounding escapes, Lustig's unparalleled charm and wit kept him one step ahead of the law, until the tides of fortune began to shift. This thrilling saga of swindles and cunning maneuvers unfolds against the backdrop of Paris, a city steeped in history, intrigue, and the audacity of one man's daring exploits. Undeterred by his close encounter with the law, Lustig's thirst for criminal exploits remained insatiable. As he returned to the United States, he plunged headlong into a life of crime, driven not only by the allure of wealth but also by the exhilaration of outsmarting his targets. In a bold move, he even set his sights on conning the infamous gangster, Al Capone, in the year 1925. With calculated precision, Lustig arranged a meeting with the 26-year-old Capone at a luxurious Chicago hotel. During their encounter, he skillfully convinced Capone to invest a staggering $50,000 in a seemingly foolproof get-rich-quick scheme, assuring the mobster that he would double the amount within a mere 60 days. Astonishingly, Lustig astutely returned the entire sum to Capone, claiming that his grand deal had tragically fallen through. Impressed by Lustig's display of honesty and misled by the conman's fabricated tale of financial distress, Capone entrusted him with an additional $5,000 to invest. Unbeknownst to the notorious gangster, Lustig had other plans. Swiftly pocketing the cash, he vanished into thin air, leaving Capone none the wiser. But Lustig's criminal endeavors did not end there. He embarked on an audacious counterfeiting operation of grand proportions, which endured for nearly five years. The scheme's intricacies proved elusive to authorities until federal agents finally caught wind of the operation. The wheels of fate turned against Lustig when he faced arrest in New York on May 10, 1935. His undoing came at the hands of his own mistress who discovered his infidelity and promptly turned him over to the authorities. Convicted of running a counterfeiting operation, Lustig received a harsh sentence of 20 years at the infamous Alcatraz Island prison. In a life defined by audacious cons, close shaves, and daring escapes, Victor Lustig's story stands as a testament to the depths of human cunning and the enthralling allure of a life lived on the edge. Thank you for joining us on this exhilarating journey through the life and exploits of Victor Lustig, the master conman. We hope you found this true crime story both captivating and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more gripping tales of notorious criminals and thrilling adventures. Don't forget to ring the notification bell, so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.